making it. We do 10 tons a week. Yeah, it's a lot of kelp. And as you guys can see, it's all fed out by hand. Um, so to harvest our kelp, what we use is called a kelp cutter boat. So it's a special boat that has kind of just this trimmer on the back of it. And it goes along the kelp forest and just cuts off that top layer. Um, do you guys know how much or how fast kelp can grow a day? Yeah, like three feet a day. Um, so it grows really fast. And if we just kind of um, give it a haircut or trim the lawn, so to speak, um, it keeps growing back. So it's just harvested every week, brought here. We feed it out, we feed it to our abalone and also to our sea urchins, um, which will be our next stop. Our sea urchins, like, they, are they like poisonous or? Um, we don't have any venomous sea urchins in California. That's more in tropical areas. Um, they are pokey, um, but not in the sense that it's unsafe to hold them. More like you don't want to step on them. Um, which should it'd be really interesting if that became an issue <laughs> during today's. Sorry. Parker, where are we going? <laughs> and so this um, kelp trailer's full, I think. Yeah, so that's kind of what it starts out looking like. Um, you just chip away at it. Do they have a specific. Uh, do they like the little bulbs on it or do they have a preference? Yeah, so it seems like they tend to graze on the blades first. Um, I think part of that is it's just easier to get, uh, but they'll completely remove the stipes and nematocysts by the end. I think it's just a little hard for a snail to grab something that's floating away from it. And then um, all the kelps in these big giant bags, which is what this crane is used for. So it moves the big bag from the kelp truck into that trailer. Um, and then once it's in the trailer, we have like a big slicer. So they kind of cut it into like little cake slices just to make it a little more easy to work with. Is that a train track? There? Yeah. So they did eventually build the train, uh, just not when that guy needed it. <laughs> it was pretty interesting. His wife was, was like set on that dream coming to reality. So she took him out of the mausoleum to put him on the train for the first ride to Goleta and then just put him back. Nice. <laughs> How often do you get trains come by? Um, a couple times a day. It was like the Pacific Coast Liner. Um, pretty cool view. Now I kind of want to take it just to like look at the farm and be like, ah, there's the farm. Um, this is our porta potty if anyone would like to use it. It's clean, um, so feel free. Um, we're going to take a little break from our abalone to go into some of the work we do with purple sea urchins. Uh, are you guys familiar with what's going on with purple sea urchins right now? They're running rampant. They are running rampant, yeah. Um, so they don't really have a strong population control right now in Southern California. And so what they can do is completely remove kelp forests through overgrazing. Um, so they can remove the entire kelp forest like down to the holdfast and create what's called an urchin barren. So it just kind of looks like the rocky reef that's left behind. Um, and after they do that, they're called zombie urchins because they kind of decrease their internal organs because there's not a lot of food availability, um, but they can still live and sustain themselves um, just by eating little straps and conserving their energy. And so when they don't have the good innards, they're not a marketable product. Um, what we eat from urchins is called uni. If you guys tried uni. Going to. You're going to. I think the purples are pretty tasty. Um, so uni just comes from the donad. There's five little strips inside each urchin. Um, and so when they're in the urchin barrens, those are completely depleted. There's nothing to sell to people there. So what we do is we work with divers to collect urchins from those barrens. We buy them from the divers and then we bring them here to the farm and just um, feed them a lot of kelp so that they can grow that donad back. It takes about 10 weeks to get a good marketable size. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's creating a new branch of the urchin fishery while also solving a conservation issue um, and just kind of diversifying what we eat from the ocean. Because previously red urchins were, or not even previously, currently red urchins are the common urchin here, but I'm trying to make purples just as cool. Yeah. And I think they taste a little bit better than the reds. Um, here we feed this to our intermediate stage, uh, but also to people. Um, restaurants will buy it. Um, and then it's also a really popular tropical fish food. Um, I've heard Tang's really like it. So we bring a bunch down to Los Angeles. 
Um, every Thursday we bring some down to LA, like hundreds of pounds of it for aquariums. Anyone else want to taste? It's pretty salty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This texture I prefer. We can also try the dulse. Um, 